Ladies, gentlemen, and whoever else is listening to this, welcome to another installment of the Wrestling Matters Podcast. I am your host, Ed H, that E to the A to the D, Anthony Walker, and uh, I can't believe it. It's actually here. Coming up to one year of the Wrestling Matters Podcast, but this, today is March 16th. It's my 50th show. That's right. I celebrate 50 shows of the Wrestling Matters Podcast going back last year to April 7th, Monday, April 7th. 2014 and this is how this whole thing started man i mean did i ever think i'd make it to 50 shows probably but you always had that worry of people not getting what you're trying to edit and what you're trying to produce but uh and what you're trying to bring to the masses also and it's worked and now i'm on 50 shows wow it's kind of weird man i mean i I gotta admit it's kind of weird it feels strange but it doesn't feel bad strange man it feels right too Anyway, today's show, I will be talking WWE, NXT, TNA, ROH, yes, ROH is back, ladies and gentlemen, one week hiatus due to a preview show of the 30th anniversary show, but now it's back, we're back to wrestling on the show, so yes, I watched it this week and I'm going to review it, as well as Insane Championship Wrestling, that's right, ICW, the fourth installment of the Friday Night Fight Club. On demand, like I say, guys, you ain't got on demand. You ain't got the on-demand service of ICW, then you are definitely missing out. And I will be, and I will be reviewing and giving my thoughts and opinions on the Friday Night Fight Club episode four later on in the show. And also, ladies and gentlemen, just like I've said, I think I said last week, and I'm going to say again, I got a surprise interview this week. I had a little chat with a few people that you probably already know, and if you don't, then sorry, but. You obviously live under a rock. I have a surprise interview. It's not with a wrestler. This is just something that's never been done. That is until now. I had a little interview this past week. A very short interview, but a good interview nonetheless. And you want to hear it. You want to see it. It will all be revealed. It will all be explained at the end of the program. At the end of the podcast. I will be bringing you that later on in the podcast. So stay tuned. Keep listening if you want to hear it. Because it's something special. It's never been done. Not to my knowledge. And I listen, I've seen other podcasts. And I've listened to other podcasts. And then all these other podcasts have done interviews. And I've done some interviews too. I've done two interviews at this moment. Hopefully that will expand very much so in the future. Uh, I've got one in the pipelines that I'm in the middle of working on. But this interview is extra special. Because like I say, it's historic. And it's never been done. And I'm the first podcast host. I'm the first podcaster, wrestling podcaster anyway, to do it. So, you want to know what it is? Tune in, hang tight at the end of the show, and all will be revealed on this show today. 50th episode, I can't believe it. And I will talk also with my views and opinions, and I've got some thank yous to do as well. I feel the need for some thank yous. This is my 50th episode, and i got some thank yous to throw out. So... You know, because I didn't get to where I am today alone. You know, this wasn't, you know, I had some help on, along the way. I'm going to admit that. Quite frankly, probably a lot of help. But I had some help along the way and I will do some thank yous at the end of the show. But first this week, I feel the need to get this out of the way and get these out of the way. I'm going to start with Raw this week. The Raw's main talking point. So without further ado, let's get into it. Raw kicked off this week with Randy Orton. And uh, the authority were trying to welcome... Well, the authority minus Triple H and Stephanie trying to bring back and welcome back Randy Orton into the fold. Only in Randy Orton's case is he reintroduced into the authority wasn't without its hiccups. The Viper responded to its official welcome back with a joke. That to say, he roasted Big Show, Kane and J&J Security before foretelling a rather dismantling of Seth Rollins before playing the whole thing of Yorks at the end. About the only members of the authority who bought the joke were Rollins and Big Show, though the results of the main event handicap match would truly determine the if Orton's future in the authority was a laughing matter. In what's become a recurring bad dream for Bad News Barrett, the champion managed to brawl his way into the advantage 
only to be blasted in the face with sudden rudden need that end it added a few more degrees to Barrett's already cooked, crooked nose. Barrett retaliated with a bull hammering f the beard off the yes man only to be taken out himself with a clothesline by Dean Ambrose on the ramp. Bad news indeed. And that was an Archu's miss Miss Comedian thing at the ri at ringside led him to stick his nose in again where it doesn't belong. Although it has been very entertaining between for our truth as well. But once again, bad news Barrett loses. Question is, will he walk out of WrestleMania with a championship belt? And all that led to Dean Ambrose one on one with Stardust. And the Fifth Dimension's favourite song, A to Rebound Clothesline and Dirty Deeds. Why Cody Chance ran around him all the same. What we'll part will these two play at WrestleMania? Will Will Dean Ambrose get what he wants at WrestleMania? That's the Intercontinental Championship. He's back and he's not impressed. The first Raw appearance. He's back and he's not impressed. The first Raw appearance of the Brock Lesnar in a month was largely used as an opportunity for the Beast Incarnate to react along with Paul Heyman to a video hyping the rise of. Brock Lesnar's number one contender for the World Championship, Roman Reigns. That Heyman placed the hype on par with the leavings of a ball was unsurprising. Especially with Lesnar standing by his side, but the degree to which Heyman predicted the the anonymous triumph at the show of shows was most surprising, pinning Roman Reigns tearing, tearing Seth Rollins limb from limb and putting a Montreal-like conspiracy in their graves were all on the table. Getting the mic shut off again only kicked Heyman into overdrive. By the end of the rant, any title in the world was in play. Brock Lesnar was poised to conquer the world itself. And you could have heard the pin drop in Pittsburgh. Meaning, and he also mentioned as well that uh, if it came down to it, this was based off the rap. This was obviously based off the uh, the heated discussion between Brock Lesnar and uh, Vince McMahon, and that we all heard it in the air uh, news and, and the dirt sheets and that. And it was one of the best promos I've ever heard, I've ever heard since CM Punk. And the fact that Paul Heyman mentioned that. If Brock has to leave the WWE and go and unify the belts with the UFC, he'll do so. That was just the icing on the cake. And I don't know how anyone could be bored when Heyman speaks, but hey, got my attention. Right back and Eric Rowan beat Big Show and Kane. AJ Lee vs. Summer Rae. Tune into the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast to hear Kinney's rant on Summer Rae. Good grief. I didn't even know she was that stiff, to be fair, in the ring, but hey. The US champion Rusev makes an example out of Curtis Axel. Going into his match with... Going into a supposed uh, match with uh, John Cena. If only he, Rusev would say yes, which he did. And, f and Cena f came down, put a beat down on him, and finally gets what he wants at WrestleMania. The New Day defeat the WWE Tag Team Champions. Why the fuck for? I don't know. I mean, the less said about this, the better. I mean, Kenny, if you want to hear it, I mean, go to WWE, go to Sunday Segway. I'll leave the link in the description for the episode I somehow found myself on this past week. Uh, just check it out. I mean, what Kenny says about Sunday Segway is spot on. Uh, what Kenny says about the New Day, rather, is spot on. Anyway, Naomi meets Nat beats Natalia. The Usos beat the Usos def get defeated by Los Matadores. I mean, what the fuck? The two best tag teams in WWE at this point in time, Cesaro and Tyson Kidd, and the Usos get beat by Los Matadores and New Day. Okay, Bray Wyatt has another message. For the Undertaker, only to be interrupted. Bray Wyatt has another message for the Undertaker, only to be interrupted by the Undertaker, and says to Bray Wyatt, "You will rest in peace," meaning that he accepts his challenge for WrestleMania. Question is, will he show up at WrestleMania? 
if the match is on, doesn't necessarily mean he's going to show up. And question and question two is, will he show up as the Black Demon, or will he show up as the American Badass? Because I'm hearing some rumours that there's a possibility he may come back as the American Badass. I know it's not what we want, guys, because we want to see the Undertaker and this guy. You know the the fear, you know the the eater of worlds and the demon himself, the black demon himself. But you know, if you believe what you read, you might not be back as the black guy, the black uh, demon. If it it is possible, it is possible to end up a loser twice in the span of one match. If you're Seth Rollins, the answer is yes, and yes, first Mr. Money in the Bank took the loss in the traditional sense to Roman Reigns who avenged his defeat at, at Rollins' hands last week by spearing the Money in the Bank winner out of his boots. Then he lost in another sense to Randy Orton. After manipulating the authority all night, allowing Kane and Big Show to get themselves ejected and convincing Rollins to send J&J security packing, two, Orton finally got his hands on Rollins. After said spear. All jokes aside, the double bird that Orton flipped Rollins at the moment of truth turned out to be the last painful thing. The expert predator subjected his prey to a viper-like beating. The viper chased Rollins throughout the entire arena, whispering venomous nothings into his ear all the way and kilometing the beat down with an RKO through a table. The announce table, that is. It wasn't out of nowhere, per se. In fact, it was a long time coming, but there was still nothing Rollins could do to stop it, which made it even more satisfying for Mr. Rotten. And, like I said yesterday, and like I said yesterday on Sunday Segway, I gave Raw a 6 out of 10. Now, why waste time, guys? Let's get straight onto it. This is SmackDown, men. Now, without further ado, guys, let's get into it. Let's get onto it. Let's... Waste no time. Smackdown main points. Daniel Bryan announced that he was going to be in the Money in the Bank, or he put his name in the hat to, to, to challenge for the Intercontinental Championship. So that's another member added to the fray for the Intercontinental Championship. So, well, the Intercontinental Championship ladder match at WrestleMania. So now that's seven in total from what I've got. Will there be number eight? Guess we'll find out, won't we? Tyson Kidd, Cesaro, and Los Matadores defeat Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, and the Usos. Basically a repeat of Monday Night Raw, except this time it was an eight-man tag. And unlike Raw, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro got the win, along with Los Matadores, because they lost to the New Day. Question is about this, guys, is will we see the Tag Team Championships defended at WrestleMania? I'm hearing no. I'm hearing there's a possibility that it could be a six man or six person tag match involving the Usos, Naomi versus Tyson Kidd, Cesaro and Natalia. Will it be a fatal four way? Could it be Tyson Kidd defending Tyson Kidd and Cesaro defending the tag belts against New Day, Los Matadores and the Usos? Where the hell Los Matadores and Uso and uh, the New Day come from, I don't know, but hey, it is what it is. I guess we'll find out at WrestleMania. Interesting indeed. Ryback beats Miz. I think Miz is starting to turn into a jobber. The Miz battled fellow WrestleMania Andrew the Giant Memorial Battle Royal participant Ryback in a one on one showdown. But without Damien Miz down in the corner, the A-lister ordered his personal assistant, who was also who will also be competing in the WrestleMania Battle Royal to stay backstage and attend his assistant duties. The awesome one could have used some help, however, the big guy did beat him with shell shocked. Mark Henry confronts Roman Reigns. Paul Heyman's impassionate speech on Raw was met with an equally emotional reaction from Roman Reigns on SmackDown, but it was a surprise return of Mark Henry that really got the big dog hot under the collar. The world's strongest man tried to tell the Samoan superstar he can't beat Brock Lesnar 
at WrestleMania, but the returning competitor found out the hard way that you don't tell Reigns what he can't do. After getting pushed by the massive detractor, WWE's powerhouse superstar responded by delivering a Superman punch and a spear through the barricade. Welcome back, Mark. Orton returned to SmackDown this past week with an interview. Orton returned this past week to SmackDown with an interview. An interview being how he set up the master plan to get his hands on Seth Rollins. And he ended it with this week. He said he was going to go to Rollins this week on Raw. Basically beat the hell out of him, finish what he started. And then challenge him to a match at WrestleMania. WrestleMania. Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins. It's going to be interesting. And last but not least, the main event. The roller coaster ride that is the Intercontinental Championship chase reached fast and furious levels in the SmackDown Six Man Tag Match main event and aimed the chaos in the contestants' final moments. Daniel Bryan tagged himself in on Dolph Ziggler and hit the running knee on Luke Harper to pick up the victory for the team. The feel-good moment would not last long, however. The show-off and Dean Ambrose seemed to take exception to the beard, attracting all the glory during the post-match interview with Michael Cole, with both superstars calling the Yes Man a turd. Can the pursuit of the Intercontinental Championship get any more crazy? I think so. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the WWE Raw and SmackDown main points. I decided to put them together because I didn't want to dawdle this show. I wanted to make this podcast the best it can be, but I also didn't want to dawdle it because, let's face it, Raw and SmackDown this past week were very good. I mean, it's WWE at the end of the day, but I've seen better shows. But that being said... I will be back after this, ladies and gentlemen, with the nitty-gritty of the podcast. That is the NXT Talking Points This past, from this past week. So stay tuned, and I'll see you in a bit. 50th show, baby! If you like the Wrestling Matters Podcast, why not check out the Wrestling Matters Podcast Facebook fan page at www.facebook.com forward slash WM Podcast. Wrestling Matters, wrestling fans. Be sure to listen to the Wrestling Matters Podcast each and every Monday only on Mixcloud, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, YouTube, Podomatic, and SoundCloud. Wrestling Matters, wrestling fans, we talk about Monday Night Raw, we shoot the breeze, we pipe bomb, and we tell it like it is. Tune in each and every Monday for the Wrestling Matters Podcast, where wrestling matters. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Wrestling Matters Podcast, 50th episode. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is the 50th episode, and I'm going to talk about NXT now. NXT main talking points and opinions. This past week's NXT kicked off with Enzo Amor and Colin Cassidy defeating Los... The Lucha Dragons, rather, in an NXT number one contenders match. Now... Tag team number one contenders match, which I knew this was going to happen anyway because they've been building up uh, the tag team champions to defend the belts against uh, Enzo Moore and Colin Cassidy. This this was just a stamp of approval. Uh, great match, kind of a predictable win because we all knew what was going to happen. Because, like I say, the build up from previous weeks has led to this, and this was just to make it finance, you know, make it final that. Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy weren't going to get a shot at the tag team belt at some point, which I'm guessing is March 25th as well. So we'll have to wait and see on that. Alex Bliss beats, is it Carmella? Alex Bliss returned to the ring this week after suffering a broken nose several months ago, and she cleared her sights on the NXT Women's Champion, Sasha Banks. The sparkly diva had to get through Carmella this week, though, and looked impressive in her return bout. Bliss gave up size to the Princess of Staten Island, but she was successful in taking Carmella down to the mat on several occasions, though Carmella targeted her nose. Bliss fought through and put Carmella away with the sparkle splash to win the match. I'm hearing rumours that Adrian Neville... Charlotte, Sasha Banks, and a possible few others as well, but they, they, them three could be getting a call up sometime soon to the main roster. I hope not, but if that's the case, maybe Sasha will be dropping the title to Alexa. We'll have to see. Alex Riley, in his in-ring return, considering you know he's been a commentator for the past two years, beat the hell out of CJ Parker. 
After nearly two years away from the squared circle, Alex Riley officially made his England return on NXT, taking on CJ Parker. There was plenty on the line for A-Rai, who was looking to impress NXT general manager William Regal in hopes of earning a match against Kevin Owens. Fueled by pure rage, Riley cut off the warrior, the eco-warrior. He could spew his conversation in act invective within the NXT universe behind him with the, or with the NXT universe behind him excuse me a Ryan unleashed his pent-up f- fury on Parker picking up the victory with a huge blockbuster top off the top rope after the bout Owens taunted the emotional Riley saying he was going to end a Rai's car- in-ring career it appears that a Rai- Riley impressed Regal and he will get his opportunity at Owens next week when NXT takes over Columbus, Ohio and the Arnold Sports Festival. Hideo Itami and Tyler Breeze ended the hour as the main event of NXT. Tyler Breeze defeated Hideo Itami. Hideo and Tyler continued their rivalry in this week's main event after last week's sneak attack. Itami was out for payback against Prince Pretty. Breeze on the other hand, was determined to show that he's more than just a pretty face. The self-obsessed superstar spent the early moments of the match trying to avoid the time his kicks, only to get caught with a knee and a hard clothesline on the arena floor. Breeze eventually knocked Atami off the top rope and locked in, or locked on rather, a tight headlock to take control. Keeping the, his rival grounded, Atami rebounded trading blows with Prince Pretty. The Japanese sensation looked to be on the verge of victory after sending Breeze face first into the ring post, but Prince Pretty absorbed a fury of strikes, invaded a dropkick in the corner and clobbered Atami with the beauty shot to end the victory. Is this going to end? I'm guessing their next match will be March 25th. You know, will there be a stipulation? We'll just have to wait and see. And speaking of March 25th, guys, which is WrestleMania week to be precise, March 25th episode, which I'm guessing is a big NXT show again, March 25th will see Kevin Owens defend the NXT Championship belt against... Finn Balor, that's right. Finn Balor gets his title shot March 25th. And like I said on you on Facebook, on in a comment section underneath the announcement, an epic match is in store for March 25th. Question is, will Prince himself come out as new NXT champion? Or will Kevin Owens continue his dominance as NXT's king? I guess we'll have to wait and see March 25th. Should be interesting though. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, 4 out of 5 for... NXT as always, because it is NXT. And with that being said, I will take a quick break and I'll be back with TNA's main points, plus Ring of Honor, yes, Ring of Honor is back on the show, ICW, views and opinions of the world of wrestling, and a little surprise. So stay tuned. Oh, son of a bitch, the glass has shattered. That's because the Sunday segue is in the building. This is your boy, Kenny Killer, and I want to say well done to the Wrestling Matters podcast. Tony Walker, your boy did it. He reached 50 episodes, uh, one year anniversary coming up soon. So well done, mate. Keep it going. And if you don't like that, you can choke on that slap nuts. Woo! Be sure to listen to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. What? What? Every Sunday with Kenny Killer and the Gowden Sugar Shoes. Yes! Yes! With all the news, views, and laughter that you want. They like jet airplanes. They like long limousines. Every Sunday, the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast on Podomatic, iTunes, and YouTube. So why don't you choke on that, slap nut? TNA's main talking points. Welcome back to the Wrestling Match Podcast, by the way. 50th episode. I want to get straight into it right now. This is the TNA main talking points. Immediately, Bobby Roode takes the fight to Eric Young. A standing dropkick sends Young to the outside. Roode's onslaught continues as he drives Young face first into the barricade. Roode pulls Young to his feet, but Young counters with a, by raking the eyes. By the way, this is a last man standing match with Eric Young and Bobby Roode to kick off Impact. 
Young backs Rude into a corner before connecting with a very stiff shot to the face. Young attempts to suple a suplex rather to Rude, but Rude counters with a suplex of his own, dropping Young onto the ramp. Bobby Rude sets up a table at ringside before driving Young into the guardrail, this time rip first. Young clutches his side as the action returns to the ring. Eric Young capitalizes and connects with a whip into a flying neckbreaker. He drapes Rude over the edge of the ring and connects with a clobbering blow to the back of the head. Young delivers a second neckbreaker outside. Rude is up at 7. Eric Young sends Bobby Rude flying into the steel steps. Somehow Rude gets lodged under the stairs. Rude appears desperate as Young attempts a power driver on the stairs. Rude counters and both men fall to the floor. They're both up at 8. Rude and Young grab chairs. They swing and connect with one another. They follow up the smash with a double clothesline. They both reach their feet again. As the official count hits nine, Rude and Young crawl back into the ring and Bobby Rude catches a second win, but it's short-lived as Young catches him with a power driver. Rude is up at nine. Eric Young grabs another chair. This time he takes a swipe at a fan before smashes the chair across Bobby Rude's back. He drops the chair in the ring and attempts a second power driver. Rude counters with a power driver of his own. Young head bounces off the chair. Official count, both men are up to their feet at nine. Bobby Roode lifts Eric Young for a Roode bomb, but Young grabs the top rope and le leverages out of the move before pulling himself onto the apron. He drags Roode through the ropes and tries one more time for a power driver, but Roode counters with a Roode bomb that sends Eric Young crashing through the table. Somehow, Young was able to get up at the count of ten. Correction. Young was unable to get up at the count of ten. Your winner of the match is Bobby Roode. Epic match from both men. Hopefully this will be the end of it. Drew Galloway enters the impact zone. He says that first and foremost he's a fan that he wants to feel the passion of the crowd. He leaves the ring for the crowd and says it's story time with Drew. Once upon a time it used to matter with what fans thought we decided who would be out on our TV show then something happened and people started shoving things down our throat who wants to take back wrestling Galloway addresses MVP he says MVP is a guy who thinks he can play God and who thinks he can manipulate the system MVP enters the arena backed by the BDC he tells Galloway as far as you're concerned I'm God because I hold your life in my hands. MVP says Drew Galloway is too dumb to be a champion because of what he has done and to whom he has done it to. He asks the rest of the BDC to stand, stand down, leading into a match. Drew Galloway versus MVP. Galloway overpowers MVP in the early goings of the match and by repeatedly clobbering MVP, MVP takes an early cheap shot that gives him the window of offense. He mounts Galloway in the center of the ring and connects with a series of rights and boots to the face. MVP misses another boot attempt instead getting hung up on the top rope. Galloway chops him down forcing MVP to his hands and knees. Galloway kicks out a hand and connects with a running drop kick to the face. Galloway hooks the future shock DDT before he connects the BDC into fear. Galloway wins by DQ. Post match, MVP connects with a blackout kick. He tosses Galloway from the ring and Kenny King holds Galloway against the ring post and low key charges. Samoa Joe stops low key to hand him a steel pipe. Loki smashes Galloway across the head. The BDC retreats, leaving Galloway in a bloody mess. The main event is hair versus hair, Spud and EC3. As Spud and EC3 meet face to face in the centre of the ring, the London crowd feverishly chants for their hometown hero. Spud unleashes a few fury of offense which backs EC3 into a corner. Into the corner. EC3 rolls to the outside, but 
Hot Pursuit, Spud gives chase, he smashes EC3 face onto the apron. Spud unloads a series of chops before shoving EC3 into the barber's chair. Spud connects with a vicious drop kick to the face. EC3 regains his composure and mounts a comeback that culminates with a huge clothesline that leaves Spud lying in the ring. EC3 chokes Spud with a middle rope, but Spud's able to dodge a running knee, leaving EC3 hung up. Spud connects with another drop kick that sends EC3 back to the outside. Spud launches himself over the top rope with a senton at EC3. EC3 finds himself back in the ring to distract the referee. Tyrus rushes to ringside. He pulls Spud from the ring and power bombs him onto the floor. Tyrus rolls Spud inside. EC3 makes the cover, but Spud kicks out. Mr. Anderson enters to deliver a mic check to Tyrus on the ramp. EC3 attacks Mr. Anderson using the arm brace he is wearing. Spud also hit with the brace and he begins bleeding f from a gash in his forehead. EC3 drives Spud head first into, a turn into the turnbuckle. EC3 forces, focuses his attack on Spud's face. When he, lock when he looks up, Spud's blood is splattering all over his chest and face. His assault continues. The blood of Spud, of, of Spud rather, smears across EC3's chest as he screen, as the screen fades to black and white with every head on shot of Spud's face. Jamie Borash intervenes with a low blow to EC3. Spud connects with a stunner. EC3 emerges. He repeatedly slams Spud face first into the mat, but like a true underdog spuds digs deep and explodes with a series of hard chops and a shining wizard spud kicks ec3 in the head before attempting an underdog and that's when ec3 counters to shift the momentum in his favor ec3 clubs spud again with the brace he makes a cover but spud is out at two ec3 drags spud up only to take him down with one percenter and ECP, EC3 rather gets the win. Post match, EC3 says that Spud has the most heart and determination he has ever seen. He says that there was a time he and Spud were friends. EC3 says that Spud proved he belonged in Impact Wrestling and that Spud could all, could one day become a world champion. EC3 EC3 says he won't shave Spud's head because he's proved he's a man. EC3 extends his hand. Spud accepts the gesture, the two hand shake. EC3 raises Spud's hand high in the air. EC3 holds the ropes for Spud. As Spud climbs through the ropes, EC3 grabs a handful of hair and savagely attacks. He screams, not. Spud, time to play. Time to pay, rather. EC3 pummels Spud and hangs him upside down in the corner. He shaves Spud's head and screams, Where's Mama? Where's Dad? Spud's defeated. EC3 grabs the mic and screams, Take notice, this ring, this company, this industry, and his world. It's, t it's mine now. Very, very, very unique Impact Wrestling this week but very effective I must admit could it be better yeah it could but at the moment right now impact is somehow doing well and that is the end of with that being said that is the end of the impact review and views and opinions join me after this ladies and gentlemen after this little quick time out I'm going to be back with yes you've guessed it Ring of Honor that's right Ring of Honor is back on the Wrestling Matters podcast after a week hiatus. It's back to wrestling, where wrestling matters. Ring of Honor is next. Stay tuned. Bullet Club. Four, 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 four. Life.
Tama Tonga. Bad Luck Fale. The Young Bucks. Yujiro Takahashi. AJ Styles. Doc Gallows. The Machine Gun. Carl Anderson. Believe in the Bullet Club. Believe in us. Everything we do is just too Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Wrestling Matters Podcast. And without further ado, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor kicked off this week with a tag team match. And the tag team match contested of The Addiction, Frankie Kazarian and Christopher Daniels, and the House of Truths duo, Jay Diesel and the reigning world television champion Jay Lethal. To start this match, Chain Wrestling was on and Kaz out wrestled Jay Diesel and then Jay got sick of it and ended up tagging Mr. Lethal. Pace of the match quickens, then Daniel slows it down to take advantage. House of Truth take control though. The addiction controlled the match keeping Jay Diesel away from Jay Lethal until Truth Martini got involved. The House of Truth are back in control as it went to break. House of Truth's controls Daniels slowing him down. Best way to do it. Lethal goes for a dive and completely misses Daniels and take to te- and Dan- well he completely misses and Daniels tags in Kazarian. He completely missed the dive. He almost took himself out and almost took his partner out. Yeah, he almost took his partner's head off. And that mistake allowed Daniels to tag Kazarian. Martini jumps off. A little spot of the match which was hilarious. Mar- Truth Martini jumps over for some strange reason. Daniel uh, Kazarian comes in, starts unloading, and then Truth Martini jumps it over. He jumps over the ropes t- in the ring. And as he jumps over, Kazarian's like, what are you doing, Muppet? Punches him and just walks, and then he flies back out the ring again, which was hilarious. High impact offense by Kaz, and he locks in a submission on uh, Diesel. And then all that led to KRD. Now, I haven't been watching uh, Ring of Honor that much, so I don't know who the KRD are. But they came down and distract. Well, one of the members was on the apron as Daniel set up for BME, best moonsault ever, and he was on the turnbuckle as Daniels was about to do it, and then that distraction allowed Jay Lethal to roll up and get the victory. So, where this leads between the bad addi- to between bad influence, the addiction, and KRD, I don't know. Because we'll have to wait and see in upcoming episodes. Great tag team match to kick off. Great wrestling. Great, you know, great stuff in the match, and uh, it was a sign of things to come. Up next, Truth. The top prospect finals, Donovan Dijak and Will Ferrara. Will showing he is not afraid of Dijak. Dijak proving to be powerful. It was just basically, you know, uh, David versus Goliath. I mean, Dijak is a beast. An absolute tank. Uh, Ferrara taking a beating from what I've seen. Dijak using his power. It was just a pace. So it was just in the match. Ferrara was trying to quicken the pace but couldn't on occasions. And Dijak just beat the shit out of him. Ferrara manages to hit a DVD, f- a, a DVD, a DDT for a near fall. One of the best spots in the match. Ferrara's on the outside and Dijak, Dijak hits a moonsault, swear to God, moonsault on Ferrara, springboard. Ferrara's on the outside, he springs off, off the second rope, does a moonsault and lands on his feet and gets an ROH chant for it as well. It's insane. Someone of his size and he does stuff like that. It's unbelievable. And then Dijak hit, manages to hit his finisher after counting for hours finisher to win. It was an awesome match. Great pros, great prospect finals. Never seen the previous matches, unfortunately, but glad I saw this one. Absolutely outstanding. And Donovan Dijak is one for the future. I'm going to say that right now. Absolutely one for the future. Unbelievable. 
Unbelievable. The main event contested of Red Dragon and a Decade, which was Adam Page and BJ Whitmer, and it was for the World Tag Team Championships. That De- Decade jumped Red Dragon from the start, advantage De- Decade, until one mistake allowed Red Dragon to get an advantage. It was just a fight from the beginning. Red Dragon take control of an inexperienced Adam Page. Dragon displaying great tag team wrestling on on Page. Dragon to proving to be the quicker and proving be to, to be too quick until BJ sets a trap, which basically I think it was O'Reilly tried to baseball slide him, and then BJ just lifted the ring apron uh, thing, which he lifted up to go under the ring. He, he lifted that out the way and basically caught him in, sets the trap, and the decade begin a comeback and take advantage as ROH goes to a commercial break. Coming back from commercial break, decade have Red Dragon in trouble, BJ using his power and experience, Page showing great strength as well to get a near four, Decade really really taking control over O'Reilly, a beautiful exploder suplex by Rip Whitmer and then Fish gets a tag in and mounts a fight back for Red Dragon as it breaks down, Decade almost become champions, they almost get a near four and we're about half a second away from becoming the world tag team champions, a mistake by Page Fish takes Whitmer out of the match and O'Reilly has Page in an armbar and Page taps out to retain. He tried to get him he tried to get him in a in another submission move as well, but it wasn't going well for him and then he just switches it into an armbar and then gets Page to tap out. And the Red Dragons retain the World Tag Team Championships. But that wasn't the story of the match. The story of the match was took place after it. Because BJ Whitmer and Steve Carino got into a confrontation at the announce booth. And then one minute Whitmer's throwing water all over Steve Carino. Steve Carino is pissed, gets in the ring, goes to confront Whit- Whitmer and pushes people down and happens to push a young lad down, which I'm guessing is one of the pupils of, maybe one of the pupils of Steve Carino. It was someone who Steve Carino knew very well and the be- and the decades start to get into his head and start to get into the head of uh, the, get- the kid saying, look what he's done. They were trying to tell him, trying to feed his mind, poison his mind against Steve Carino, so to speak. And considering the decade were out due in the prospect match, scouting Donovan and Walt Ferrara. Could that young lad be a new member of the decade in the future? I don't know. But it seems BJ Whitmer, at some point, may have to go one-on-one with Steve Carino. I don't know. We'll have to tune into this week to find out what happens in that situation. Because I'm sure, no doubt, this week on Ring of Honor, it will be addressed. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, 4.5 out of 10, I'm going to give Ring of Honor, because it was actually pretty decent this week. And I enjoyed it very much. So with that being said, that is the end of the Ring of Honor main points and main talking points and review. Hope you enjoyed that. And after the break, I'm going to get to the main event of the wrestling talk. That's right. Insane Championship Wrestling. I will be talking ICW and the fourth installment of the Friday Night Fight Club. Stay tuned after this 50th episode, baby. Sweet! If you like the Wrestling Matters Podcast, why not check out the Wrestling Matters Podcast Facebook fan page at www.facebook.com forward slash WM Podcast. Wrestling Matters, wrestling fans. Welcome back to the Wrestling Matters Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. It is now time for ICW. That's right, the fourth installment of the Insane Fight Club that you can see on ICW On Demand. And uh, great credit to uh, Mark Dallas this week as well. I followed him on Twitter in the uh, Mark Dallas's promotion. He basically tweeted every single uh, network he can get his hands on. You know, like Spike TV UK, Channel 5, Channel 4, you know, and so on. He promoted, that's what he did to promote uh, the ICW On Demand, uh, the fourth episode. (laughs) He just basically said, check this out. So he's doing his damnedest to get ICW to where it needs to be, which is on television. But for the moment right now, if you want to see ICW and great ICW wrestling action, you need to get, you need to check out ICW Online on ICW YouTube page. The ICW Online YouTube page, that is. You need to check that out and you need to to buy and subscribe to the on-demand service. I'll keep saying this every week. Guys, if you haven't got ICW on demand, fuck are you missing out. I know there's people that probably won't be able and can't be able to get it and that, but at the end of the day, it's £3.80 maybe 75 a month and I'll guarantee you this right now take it from someone who subscribed to it it'll be the best £3.85 75 a month that you will ever 
pay for in your life. You get to see Grado, you get to see Sabu, you get to see great shows as well, probably some sh- some shows of the tour. Hell, you can even see Barrowmania. That's right, Barrowmania, which will be up the week commencing March 30th as well. Maybe up straight away, I don't know. But you can bet you, you can bet your ass you will see Barrowmania on ICW On Demand. That's why you need to get the On Demand service. Other than that, though, it is now time for the ICW Insane Friday Night Fight Club, episode 4. And it kicked off this week with Stevie Boy. That's right, Stevie Boy from the Bucky Boys. And he took on Liu King Sharp. Now, it starts off, advantage to Sharp to start off. Uh, he managed to get a good advantage over uh, Steve, uh, Stevie Boy. Sharp misses a frog splash, and uh, Bucky, Stevie tries to take back advantage, but Sharp proves proves to be too quick for Stevie Boy until until Sharp runs into a super kick that almost takes his head off, but completely knocks him out because Stevie Boy got the win. Don't want to make of that match, but at the end of the day, it was a good win for Stevie Boy. Backstage, Norm Dar is on the phone walking up the steps, and he walks right into the 55. Now, Norm Dar, since he wants nothing to do with the 55, that was until Kid Fight tries to convince him to join the 55. You know, trying to fill his head with what grado has been doing. Grado's making more money than him, yada, 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 yada. And Kid Fight let him know and just said, you know, to think about it. DCT and Viper date. Now, DCT and Viper finally go on their date. They toast to the date, and they rip a piece of bread off. You know, like a thing. DCT gets to rip, gets her to rip a piece of bread off to eat it and everything. But he was just being DCT, an annoying prick, in a way. And I kind of got the vibe when I thought when I saw this the first time that Viper didn't want to be there. Anyway, speaking of DCT, here's Conrad's, the Polo Promotions. Is it Mark Coffee and... Jackie Polo defended the ECW, the, the ECW, the ICW rather, tag team championships against the Models. Now, the Models wasted no time at the match. They, they kicked off by attacking Polo Promotions from the get go. Models took control of Mark Coffey. Mark Coffey is serious, was seriously in trouble during the, the match, and uh, the Models definitely were in control. Coffey manages to create some space, but the Models stop that, and then Coffey hits Death Wish to tag in Jackie Polo. Polo hits body slams and then takes one himself. And the models take back control, but Polo gets his body slams in that he wanted to get in. Polo has a camel clutch. That was until he got kicked right in the face by the other member of the models. And Polo promotions finish the models off with their moves, which is a lift up in the air from uh, Polo and a German suplex like maneuver for the victory. And Polo, Polo Promotions retained the tag team championships. Meanwhile, back in the date, it did not look like it. Did, it, it didn't look like Viper wanted to be there. But we went back to the day from what I saw. It looked like she was surrounded by this annoying prick, DCT, who thinks he's the sexiest man on the planet, and she, she was ready to go. Can I leave now, please? That's the vibe I got, anyway. Anyway, moving on from that, Liam Thompson with Carmel faced Tommy End. Now, an MMA-like wrestling to start the match off. Liam evening the skull using the arm, controlling the arm, and using, you know, basic wrestling, pick a body part, and, you know, isolated, so to speak. It was an even match. Tommy End does a spinning kick, and I'm not kidding you, you have to see this match to believe it, that seriously almost takes Liam's head off. Tommy gets a near fall. Carmel tries to intervene. Great wrestling between Liam and uh, Tommy End, and Liam is bleeding badly, which I'm guessing was from the kick that he received. Tommy displaying lethal kicks, and I mean lethal kicks. You think Daniel Bryan's got lethal kicks? (laughs) Nah. Carmel tries to stop him and works to a point. Suplex gets a near fall for Liam. Carmel tries to intervene again. Liam hits Tommy, misses, hits Carmel. Spin kick gets Tommy the win, which meaning there, guys, was Liam goes to hit Tommy, misses, hits Carmel, turns around, receives a spin kick, and Tommy Ann gets the victory and puts a little bit of leeway to what the momentum was between him and Mikey Whiplash. Let's face it, Mikey Whiplash on two occasions has competed on Friday Night Fight Club and lost due to video player, video mind games, if you will. Meanwhile, back at the date, Viper says she has a nice time, 
and I think it's safe to say that DCT won because DCT ended up paying for it and they worked out a little something something that, that allowed DCT to pay for it and uh, it seemed Viper enjoyed herself and uh, she left with DCT now the tag team main event which saw the Zero, D, the Zero G champion Kenny Williams and Joe Hendry global hero, local hero whatever the fuck hero he is take on two members of the 55 which were Kid Fight and Martin Kirby 55 jump from the start as they do that Noam Dar's music hits as, her, as hell breaks loose in the ring Noam Dar comes out and attacks the 55 the tag match went from a tag match to a six man tag Tim Wiley takes control of, for the 55 using his power this guy's a beast if you haven't seen this guy like I say, you need a guy CW on demand or check him out on YouTube whenever you can. He's a fucking tank. He really is. Absolute tank. This guy makes the Batista look like something out of Toys R Us. And that's saying something. The 55 ground the Zero G champion. Kenny creates space, but Kenny Lee puts a stop to that. But Joe Henry gets tagged in and the fight back is on. High impact offense by Wiley. That's all he was good at. That's all he's, that's all he's capable of doing. Kenny hits the quack. Buster after a few counters and, and that he manages to hit the quack buster on the fifth and ha they have the 55 beat until Kennedy pulls out the referee Williams kicks out of a spinning neck breaker and uh, as all that was going about Wolfgang comes out grabs Kennedy distracts the 55 throws Kennedy onto the 55 James R. Kennedy and Williams manages to roll up Kirby for the win. So a great win for Joe Hendry and Kenny Williams in the war against the 55. Carmel is backstage with Liam Thompson and she argues over what happened earlier on in the match. And uh, just as they're about to close and everything, Dickie Divers comes out and wants to address him and the New Age click situation because as you well know at Square Go it was uh, well some may, people may say this it was Dickie Davis who swerved Chris Renfrew and managed to beat him for the Square Go and obviously Chris didn't take too kindly to it it plays this thing of trust with him you know he, he, Chris Renfrew gives uh, Divers a pair of scissors plays this game with trust but what Divers didn't know is Chris had a pair of scissors on his own and Chris delivers a brutal beatdown on Dickie Divers that ends in Chris Renfro leaving Divers in a pool of his own blood basically and is this the end of the New Age click? I think so I think so that's that's it I mean New Age click is no more my question is though where does BT Gun see this? you know what is taking all of this? as well I guess we'll have to find out when he comes back other than that that is the end of the ICW review of the Friday Night Fight Club episode 4 only on ICW on demand that is why you need to get it guys because it's absolutely amazing and uh, I will give this show 5 out of 5 basically because I actually enjoyed it Puff, there was a lot of things down again but the wrestling in it and you know the storytelling and all that just beautiful loved it and uh, can't wait till this Friday as well for the next installment but with that being said ladies and gents that is like I said that is the end of the ICW review I'll be back after this with views and opinions in the world of wrestling and I've got a few views and opinions of my own so stay tuned just a few though like I said I don't want to take too much time because I because I've got a main event surprise lined up, I hope. So, with that being said, I'll see you after this.
Welcome back to the Wrestling Matters Podcast, and now it's time for, without further ado, views and opinions of the world of professional wrestling, as I always do. Now, I want to kick off this week with this story that I've got about The Undertaker. Undertaker and Bray, and, uh, Bray Wyatt is going to be at WrestleMania. Now, it's clear, it's, it's clear that they're keeping, WWE keeping Undertaker off television, because they want to make, because he's like an attraction now, they want to make people pay to see The Undertaker, so well, better place for it, that's... That is at WrestleMania. However, it seems that for the past couple of weeks they've also been promoting Sheamus's return. But it seems from what I'm hearing, they're keeping Sheamus off television until WrestleMania too. Undertaker, I can understand because you're only going to see that guy once a year from from now on because he's, he's on the verge of retirement. But why Sheamus? You know, why Sheamus? I mean. I think he's, he's, he's supposed to be a surprise for WrestleMania because apparently he's competing at WrestleMania in what I don't know. The two matches that I'm hearing is he may very well be in the uh, Intercontinental Championship Battle Royal, the ladder match rather, or the Andrew the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. My guess is that he will be in the Andrew the Giant Memorial Battle Royal because they've already got seven in the ladder match. I don't think they really need eight. Um, so my guessing he's more than likely going to be in the Andrew the Andrew the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And quite frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up winning it. But why do you need to keep him off TV? You know, have him come back. Don't tell anybody. You know, have that mistake of not telling anybody what he's going to be in. But don't keep him off TV. Undertaker, I can understand because he's a main attraction. But, you know, Seamus, really. <laughs> Anywho, moving on from that. Uh, Kenny Killer, the uh, host of uh, Sunday Segway, put up something on uh, Facebook this week. And apparently... Adrian Neville, Charlotte, and I think I mentioned this earlier on, and Sasha Banks are going to be getting a call up any ta- sometime soon. That's the word. Word has it. I'm fucking scared for them three. I really am. Considering, well, I'm scared for two actually. I'm not scared for Adrian Neville because let's say, despite the fact the booking of WWE at this point in time, Adrian Neville could probably go in, even though there's no cruiserweight division anymore. However, but is he capable of being a world champion or WWE champion? Probably, but uh, it's the divas that I'm concerned about. My, if if I was Adrian Neville and Sasha Banks and Charlotte, I'd stay in NXT and wait until the ev- the thing eventually brands out to be its own commodity, its own brand, because that's what it's going to be. That's what the word is. That's what the you know people are saying. But as far as Sasha, Charlotte, and Adrian Neville going up to the main roster. I think it's going to be interesting to see who Sasha drops the title to if this is the case. My guessing will be Alex Alexa Bliss as well, since she's already made it clear that she's got, that she wants a piece of Sasha. My guessing is it will be her. But uh, yeah, the best bed for them too. I added a fourth one as well. Sammy's aimed to that. He said he asked for three, and he mentioned three. I asked, I added a fourth. But the best bet for them, and Vicky L said this as well on, at one point. Keep them on NXT. And let NXT branch out on its own, be the brand, be the WWE brand, the third brand, not that it isn't anyway, and just let it be there. Because at the end of the day, like I said, maybe not Adrian Neville or Sami Zayn or Finn Balor or anything, but the Divas division at this point in time is a complete cus- clusterfuck. And at, at this moment, unless they get rid of some of the dead weight, because there's a few dead weight in there, I'm not going to mention any names, there's a few dead weight in the Divas division, Tall Divas being one of them, but at the end of the day, if I was them, I'd stay in NXT. And I hope they're listening to this because they need to stay in NXT. Because my scary thing is they might get clusterfuck in the main roster. Some more jurors also confirmed on Chris Jericho's podcast that he's in talks with WWE. God willing, he goes to NXT and stays there, quite frankly, if he comes to WWE. I mean, Rhino's on there, and Brian Kendrick's been on there. So, you know, I could see some more Joe being on there and, and trading... S- and training and helping out the young guys on there as well, and having some epic matches. The thought of my, ma- the thought of the, the, you know Cesaro faces, you know Samoa Joe. It's it, it just blows my mind. Absolutely blows my mind. And if this thing, if NXT is going to branch out on its own, you might want to get Cesaro back in there as well and stick the NXT title on him. That would be epic. I definitely like that indeed. Right, and that is the end. Those are the main talking points. I'll do some more of that next week, definitely. But those were the two main talking points that really caught my eye. Actually, made three talking points as well that really caught my eye as well. Um, and plus, I don't want to dawdle. Just want to do a quick promotion as well before I go to a break. Just want to do a quick promotion and promote the all-star, all-action wrestling show that's coming to Middlesbrough. The show that I'm going to be there because I already know... Well, I, I kind of know who's going to be there on the show. 
But if I can find it, uh, uh, excuse me, you probably can hear a newspaper at this point in time as well. But like I said, guys, if you're in the Millersburg area and you can get to the Millersburg area, tickets probably still on sale right now for the All Action Wrestling Show. Friday night, March 27th at Millersburg Town Hall. Get your tickets, £10 adult, uh, £12 adult, £10 youngster. Uh, like I say, get yourself down there, come and say hi to me because I'm going to be there. I'll be the one wearing an ICW t-shirt. You can't miss me, so just come down, say hello, talk about the podcast, talk about wrestling, talk about whatever you want, basically. And if you have any ideas on how to improve the podcast, now I've gone past 50 episodes, feel free to let me know, man. I'm always looking to improve the podcast and take it as far as I can be. As far as it will, I can take it, if you will. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just one of them things. I saw this yesterday in the paper. I'll just go to it. Uh, Little Legs is returning to it, to the show. Uh, Robbie Dynamite will be there. Tony Spitfire will be there. Uh, yeah, Tony Spitfire will be there as well. Robbie Dynamite, who many of you people may have seen in ICW. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be an action, action-packed show. I just hope they don't put Little Legs in the main event like they did last time I was there. Because, to me, that's what spoiled the show. I mean, I don't want to see... I mean, nothing on Little Legs, but I don't want to see him in a main event. I don't want to see that. If you're going to put a main event on, you've got to put a main event that people are interested in. And, all right, it was good for the show and that, but I don't think people are going to be interested in seeing uh, a talented wrestler, a talented little midget, in a main event. It just doesn't work. I mean, he is talented, but main event for a show? I don't think so. That's just my opinion, not not knocking the guy, but I wouldn't, put it, I wouldn't have put him in a main event. In any event... Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go to a commercial break, or a little promo thing, and I will be back after this with a surprise. So, hopefully you've been looking forward to this surprise. I've been looking forward to to bringing you it, because it is history-making. It is a history-making event. I will explain more after this, so stay tuned. Be sure to listen to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. What? What? Every Sunday with Kenny Killer and the Gowden Sugar Shoes. Yes! Yes! With all the news, views, and laughter that you want. They like jet airplanes. They like long limousines. Every Sunday, the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast on Podomatic, iTunes, and YouTube. So why don't you choke on that? Slap nut. Welcome back to the Wrestling Matters Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Episode 50, the one and only H-E-A-D right here, the head Anthony Walker. And ladies and gentlemen, I did it. It is now time for the surprise main event. Something that's never been done, to my knowledge at least. Okay? The last... W- I don't think there was a last time that I that anyone pulled this or anybody tried to do anything like this, but I did it, and I did it for you people to say thank you. I got an interview a 30 minute because he was a busy man like you say he's, he, it's not the wrestling mass but uh, the, the sunday segue podcast that he does as well i got a little interview with kenny killer that's right sunday segue's very own chief kenny killer it would have been with so with uh shugs his half his right hand man but unfortunately he was ill and whether he's still ill or not i don't know but fortunately he was ill i took forever to get this done there was a lot of issues that were getting in the way of it but we finally managed to make this happen i bailed him out yesterday on sunday segway make sure you check that episode out because he was falling apart and then he got me on board and i and i bailed him out and he managed to do something as well for me which was do this little 30 minute chat we talk about wrestling we talk about how he became a wrestling fan we talk about the future for him as a podcaster and the future for the sunday segue but we more importantly get to the bottom of how sunday segue came about how did it all come about to a point where it's now a phenomenon over 100 episodes how the hell did this come about you want to find out here it is In its entirety, the Sunday Segway interview with Kenny Killer, courtesy of your boy, the H-E-A-D, the head Anthony Walker, at your service. Hope you like, you're welcome, sit back, relax and enjoy, because it was a pretty good interview. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this very special interview for the Wrestling Matters Podcast, episode 50. I said to you guys, I had a little surprise for you. A little surprise just to say thank you. I've managed to get an exclusive interview with the one and only... A little chat 
with Mr. Kenny Killer. That's right, the host of the Sunday Segway. Kenny, what's up, brother? Oh, son of a bitch, the glass just smashed because Sunday Segway entered the building. What you saying, boy? It's all good, bro, it's all good. A little chat, guys, this is not going to take long because, as we all know, we have busy lives and we're not going to lie and I'm a busy man myself. <laughs> so we're not going to, we're going to get right into it. Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. First of all, how did you and your partner in crime meet? Uh, all right, well, uh, my boy, Shugs, um, the Welsh Wizard, the Newport Knight, the hashtag tech guy, um, we actually worked together in a, in a school. Um, and, uh, yeah, just we both enjoyed wrestling. Um, and, um, Jason, you, know, you know, our boy Jason Clarkson, um, he's one of my close friends, and uh, he was Shugs' close friend as well, and just so happened to find out that Shugs liked wrestling. Um, and then we kind of got talking, started listening to other podcasts in America, um, you know, and then we had um, we had that in common. And then that was it. We just kind of just spoke and just said to ourselves, oh, you know, we can, why don't we start this, you know? So we just kind of just started doing it. Um, and then the Sunday Segway was born. Um, Sunday Segway name was done by Shugs. Um, and the rest is history. So, you know, 100 and odd shows later, two year anniversary um, this weekend coming. So, yeah, yeah, that's how it started, man. Yeah, 50th episode. 50th episode well today and uh, as this is going on and everything and then uh, three weeks later for me I've got my one year show so yeah there you go it's I've amazing hit, isn't it <laughs> yeah I've hit the one year and I can't believe I've actually I mean I'm sure you guys can't believe you've hit two years I can't believe I've hit 50 episodes and 50 episodes is something I can't believe I'm going to hit one year out of this it's a milestone it's a milestone man so well done well done for that because i tell you what it's a hard graph to keep on going keep on going you go through the hard time thinking off you know i'm gonna quit i'm gonna stop oh i don't know how much people i'm getting but it doesn't matter as long as that you've got those listeners it doesn't matter how many you got just keep doing your thing i'm gonna look i'm looking for a lot more i don't plan on giving this up at all yet there's a lot more like it's like a great wrestler once said kenny we've only just begun there you go. Right. How did you get into professional wrestling? What was the main thing that drew you to become a wrestling fan? I mean, we all have our moments. I know I do. So, <laughs> um, Well, um, a long, long, long time ago, 20-odd um, plus years ago, I, uh, you know, I was at my cousin's house. Um, we never had Sky back then. No, I never had Sky, so there was no way for me to watch it. But I was at my cousin's house one day, and he was watching Superstars, and I just saw this guy like you know um tassels and just muscular and face paint and i was just like what the hell is this all of a sudden ultimate warriors running down to the ring and he's going crazy and i'm just like this guy uh-huh. you know geez i want some of this uh and then um i just you know i spoke to my dad and i was like oh what was that and then he just kind of you know they explained to me and then my dad was like oh well we, we, we can get the tapes we can get a tape for you so i didn't watch i never had the chance to watch superstars i was just a pay-per-view guy you know getting videos in um, every pay-per-view the big four um and then um yeah the, that was it the rest was history literally i was just i was crazy and the fact that i wasn't overexposed to it just made me even want it more i got a couple of wwe magazines couple figures here and there you know so um yeah. i was in my element yeah well i was a magazine collector myself back in the day and that was the only thing i could ever i mean people say you should read and this that and the other the only thing i ever read was games and mag- magazines and wrestling magazines that was the only thing i ever read and Back in the day, compared to what they are now, magazines back then were the real deal, mm-hmm. no doubt. And like I say, it was all, it was always about promote uh, pay per views for me back then as well. I mean, yours was the Ultimate Warrior, mine was Hulk Hogan. So I mean, we all have, well, like I say, we have, we all have our special moments in the yeah. world of professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think the wrestling business needs to be now? compared to the good old times now because as we all know and many people listen to the podcast our respective podcast we all know that the well especially wwe the business is a clusterfuck so what do you think in your opinion what do you think that it all needs to be um there's quite a few things i mean i think they're just in such a rush to be part of the mainstream a lot of stuff um kind of happens there where they'll have random people that has nothing to do with wrestling whatsoever on the show um which takes up a lot of time they also now have that three hour thing because obviously you know people's throwing money at them for an extra hour and fair enough you know sponsors you're gonna say yeah but it has a takes its toll on your wrestling show then it goes to the creative creative um they've 
they've they've got people in there that's not you know actual you know from the not actual people from the business so they don't know quite that much about the business but they do know a lot about soaps and so on and so on and movies and stuff so um they i feel they fail to kind of relate to what's happening now and parts of the old school i mean hence the you know scripted promos like come on you know you had guys like jake state back in the day just straight looking into the camera in your face telling you how it is no script whatsoever you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. you we need to kind of go back to that to get the real essence of what these characters what these people are like um you know and then we've got they're trying to saturate everything they're trying to do a free three four month storyline into three four weeks you know everything's yeah. rushing everything's happening quickly there's no explanations it's just a lot of again the clusterfuck um the development the, 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 the main thing is the failure to develop a lot of stars to reach the heights of where they need to do to take over from certain people that's there at the moment so you have a massive massive um uh you know you've got a main event scene and then you've got no mid cards so you've got no one building progress you've just gone you're gone straight from the gutter to all the way up to the top and when you stay at the top you're just at the top and that's it there's no progression there's no actual match progression there's no you're fighting this guy to lead to this guy to lead to this guy to lead to this guy and then all of a sudden you then you can you're eligible to win the world rumble just because you've beaten this person you know and then now because you've won the world rumble you have the right to to face the champ at wrestlemania progress look at Shawn michaels i said it on our show a couple of weeks ago look at Shawn michaels Shawn michaels is a direct um a direct example the guy started being a tag team then he went single knocked off his partner then he started you know fighting other mid carders got a manager went back to his feud with his partner then started fighting um for the intercontinental title uh he was in that scene for ages having more bigger storylines you know making his way when he won one not one rumble he won two rumbles before he won the title you know yeah. what i mean yeah. just the progress so that's definitely yeah. it for me yeah, and I think they need to bring back King of the Ring again, and oh, that a, need to make that as a pay per view as well, because there was a lot of progress and a lot of stars that came out of that. Look but, at that! The winner of that faces the champion at SummerSlam. Yeah. Simple, simple. Look yeah. at New Japan Pro Wrestling. The winner of the New Japan Cup faces the cha the champion at Invasion Attack. The yeah. winner of the G One Climax faces the winner at the Tokyo Dome. Their WrestleMania. It's yeah. easy. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's simple. It's simple format. Do tournaments, do special events, and everything, and then give the winner of that a title shot, or a, title, a, a shot at the main prize, or whatever the main prize is. Whether it's a title shot, or like you said, a title shot in New Japan or anywhere else. It's a simple, simple philosophy. And I'm a big fan, and I'm a big believer that they should bring back the King of the Ring because whoever came up with that idea to drop that pay-per-view is an idiot, in my opinion. Uh, what is the worst thing about hosting, or what has been the worst thing about hosting uh, Sunday Segway? Um, I don't think there's... It's weird to say a worst thing, because I find that, like, it's a lot of work. To get where we are at the moment, okay, um, I don't... I'm not, you know, trying to be big-headed or say that there's, you know, where um, this all-amazing machine... We're at a certain level at the moment which we're happy with you know um but it's taken a lot of time and a lot of hard work and a lot of effort a lot of ideas a lot of brainstorming to get to that point it's taken a lot of graft to get the amount of followers that we have to get the amount of people who are committed to coming on the show every week look, I mean, look how much american guests we have man yeah you know what i mean yeah i've i, I without them without them and the tech heads there's just no Sunday segue. It's as simple as that. It don't run. So yeah. without them, you know, it takes time to speak to these people on Twitter, to make sure you make, um, you know, deals, to make sure you make partnerships and links and, you know, someone's going to scratch your back so you'll scratch theirs too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's a lot of that yeah. going on and it that's what it takes to work. So I don't know. I mean, sometimes the worst thing, the wor all right, I tell you what the worst thing is sometimes, it's to write the run sheet because a lot of people don't know. The people who are guests on the shows, they have their run sheet. My run sheet is different to theirs, right? Yeah. Their run sheet is a blanket bullet point schedule of what the show's going to be like or what's going to be on the show. Yeah. My run sheet is a detailed point by point, question by question for each guest on the show. Each guest yeah. on the show. So yeah. it's just like two a T. I'm slightly OCD, yeah. but I don't give a F. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, it all works out in the end and it's all yeah. part of the job and it's all fun. And like I say, I can vouch to some of this as well, guys, because I've been on the Sunday segue and he really talks about run sheets and I've, I've received a few run sheets as well being on the episode yesterday. And by the way, check out yesterday's episode as well because I made a, an appearance 
Yeah, man. Uh, you, you definitely saved my bacon, dog. Yeah. Definitely yeah. saved my bacon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I made an appearance yesterday, and it was good. And as, as, as it always is on the Sunday segment, it's a lot of fun. And if you haven't tuned it in, tuned in to listen to it, then where have you been? But what has been the worst part or the worst thing for you as a wrestling fan? What has been your worst moment as a wrestling fan? Because, like I said, we've all had our moments. Worst, worst moment as a wrestling fan. Um, worst. I will tell you, all right. The worst moment for me as a wrestling fan was the day Shawn Michaels left the business in '98. After that, I was just like, "Wow, what's going? What's happening?" No, my, yeah. that's Shawn Michaels is the greatest in-ring performer, entertainer of all time. He is my favorite wrestler of all time. And when that guy walked away after WrestleMania 14. I was just like, oh, what? Yeah, I, yeah. Um, that's one of my. That's definitely one of my um, my worst moments in wrestling. Yeah, he walked away from the Yeah, he walked away from the business of performance, but he came back on occasions to be the commissioner and mm-hmm. in that. But yeah, yeah. I mean, if you t- if you're talking about great performers in the in the business, especially in WWE, Shawn Michaels is definitely top of that list, no doubt. Uh, what has been the best moments for you? The mo- what has made you, when you do the seg- segue and you create the segue and you, and, you, and you do the shows each and every week, do you get any satisfaction out of it? Oh, man, massively. You see, f- you got to remember, I'm a wrestling fan also, so to be able to talk about wrestling to people, all right, that um, you got to remember, I don't know no one. I don't know. When you come off the bat, I don't know anyone. The only thing I know about them is that you like wrestling and I like wrestling. And if I can engage with them on a bigger scale just because of that, then I've done something right. At the end of the day, it's um, it's satisfying to be able to have loads of people to speak to about wrestling because there's a stigma behind it. No one's going to lie. There's a little bit of a stigma behind it. Um, you know, um, a lot of people may have issues um, with not being able to relate to other people who do like wrestling. But now, with the Segheads, we have this nifty little family uh, who talk about wrestling every single day. Apart from that, I tell you the other satisfying thing is to be able to speak to wrestlers. Oh man, to be able to interview wrestlers again, that's a hard graph, bro. You've got to take a lot of no's before you get a lot of yeses. And yeah. uh, I mean, I worked hard to get those interviews. Uh, my last interview was with NWA president. NWA president, you you know what I mean? Bruce yeah. Fuck. So to interview someone as that magnitude, he owns and yeah. runs the National Wrestling Fucking Alliance. That is yeah. a big ass deal. So with stuff like that, you know, I have I get major major satisfaction with that. Um, and just to be able to be creative, I love being creative. Um, and producing the show is a lot of fun. Yeah, creative, being creative, guys. You probably don't know this, but being creative is a hell of a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. It really is a hell of a lot of fun, and it might not sound it, it might not sound it on paper, but once you get the ball rolling and start being creative, whether it's whatever it is you do in the world, whether it's on YouTube or whatever, it's fucking fun, it really is, and it, and it gets that brain going as well, and what has been your most successful interview, I know you just mentioned there the NWA president, the NWA runner, what has been the interview that has shocked you the most that you thought, that you thought you never could get? Oh man, there's only one, and that's the Jake the Snake Roberts interview. I knew that was coming. I, I... That's, that's the only. Could you imagine, right? This is months before he goes into the Hall of Fame, and I sit down, right, and I'm bricking it. I am shitting bricks, right, sitting here, yeah. quivering in my boots, thinking that I'm gonna, I'm going to interview the guy that just, yeah. I just enjoyed so much growing up, and oh man, it was such a pleasure. It was such such a pleasure. Yeah. Um. I, it was yeah. It, it it was just like a dream come true. I, um, think I, I think I'd have been shit myself as well if I was in your shoes, <laughs> interviewing the, the legend that is Jake the Snake Roberts. But I got one more. One more was um, also yeah. the interview with Karma. The fact that she it was her first, it was her last set um, of interviews before um, she was due to do some more next year. So there was that was it the last set of interviews, yeah. and I managed to get in there and just bam, she sat down with me. She, we, we had a long conversation for about an hour. I couldn't believe what we were talking about. She cried on air. What the hell? You know what I mean? Like all that kind of stuff. Like you don't, yeah. you just 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 raw live stuff, and I just I just enjoyed it. That's what the thing's all about, man. You've got to be raw when you're doing stuff like that. It's not necessarily about the show and everything, doing that live. You do that when you can, and you do that to the best that you can. But when it comes to, you know. The the uh, interviews and that you've got to shoot, you've got to let it go. You can't ed- you can't do the interview and then edit stuff that out. You've got to leave that in. in. 
leave it all in, leave it in, and have one big, huge shoot interview. Because at the end of the day, if you're editing, editing stuff out, unless they want you to, if you're editing stuff out, then it's going to ruin it. And it's not going to be, you know, you want it to be raw. You want it to be authentic. Kind of like that. What was there? Will she be able to do any interviews? Next year, because she's back in TNA, isn't she? Yes, so, she, so, so there was something happening. She was working on something, and um, her manager said that um, you know this was her last group set of interviews yeah. for another year. Um, and now I know why. So yeah, cause... Um, you've got to go through a guy called Bob Ryder in TNA to get any interviews with anyone from TNA. Um, and if you can find his contact, please give it to me. Because <laughs> that right. guy is a, a... Listen, I tried to get an interview with um, with Miss um, Tessmacher, right? And she oh, said yeah, um, she would love to do it. Brooke Tessmacher, she said she would love yeah. to do it, but I had to go through Bob Ryder. Couldn't get a couldn't get a, a, a um, email address, so that kind of yeah. flopped. Yeah. But once I do get it, oh man, be sure you'll be hearing a lot more interviews from TNA guys. And if you do get it, pass it over to me as yeah, well. we'll cause I, I'd love to. I'd love to interview some TNA ones. Uh, I can tell you one. I want. I want. I'd like to interview as well. Drew Galloway. Oh yeah, yeah. I tried want... that. Tried that. Said no. So yeah. Well, actually, uh, didn't even say no. Just didn't even respond. Yeah. You get a lot of that, man. And I've had a few as well. I've, I've emailed a certain Scottish wrestler that many of you people may know and like if you watch ICW. It's no, Grado. Yeah, it's <laughs> yourself. Yeah. And uh, the only two interviews, unfortunately, that I've been able to do are with Colleen Masters and Jezebeth. Uh, Jezebeth was a sweetheart, so... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We interviewed her. Yeah, she's great, man. Yeah, she's absolutely absolute sweetheart. And Colleen... Colleen came on. I invited Colleen to come on because she didn't like what Jezebeth was saying about her. So I thought, hey... You got an opportunity, you want to say your piece, come on on. And she was cool anyway, so. Hopefully, now that I've hit 50 episodes, hopefully that can improve and everything. I've got to get back out there a little bit more and be learn to take more no's and, and all that. Because that's what it is at the end of the day. You won't know until you try. Exactly. Just keep it going, man. You just got to take take the no's. All it does is take one, yeah, and you're rolling. Yeah, and you're rolling with that. What's the future hold for Se- Sunday Segway? Now you've hit a hundred shows. Um, so the future is to obviously keep on rolling. Um, there's plans to um, try and branch out as much in America. So we're now on the Shoot Network, and we're also now we're also on TRN. But we've just recently been put on the Shoot Network. So just trying to get more out there. Um, also, um, I think yeah, just trying to get bigger with our retro round table. So I mean, we only do that once a month, and it can only stay like that at the moment because of you know uh, the fact that. Um, you know, I've got children, um, and Shug's has got lots of marketing to do because he's a teacher. So it's just the timing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the plan is really, really for me to set up the retro round table and for someone to take it over, um, someone to join, you know, um, the Segway, uh, Segway team and take it over at the moment. Um, Michael Cook is my co-host, but I would love for Michael to take it on and run with it himself if he wanted to. I'll be happy with that. Um, and then he can make something big with it under the Segway banner. Um, but yeah, um, there's also plans to potentially try and earn money from it. So whether it's T-shirts, whether it's ads, whatever it is, to try and earn some, you know, sponsorship, try and earn some money some way. Yeah. Um, and just kind of like Shooks likes to tell me all the time, just kind of just enjoy the ride and not try to plan anything out. So we'll be making more appearances, um, doing more interviews and appearances um, um, for other people's podcasts. Uh, you know, trying to get, like I said, trying to get out there um, in America. We're out there quite a bit in America now, but I want to get out there in Europe. So I want to get um, a bit more European people on the show, um, you know, some German people, um, uh, some some French, just a bit more different pe- other wrestling fans, you know. So, yeah, and, and get on my show as well, more as well. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah good. definitely. You, you, yeah, you know, you're more you're welcome on my show. Yeah, uh, sp- you talk about sponsorships and 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 stuff like that and everything and and making money. How does all? I mean, I don't don't go t- into too much detail if you don't want to let the cat out of the bag or anything like that. If there's any like personal things there that you know personal ideas that you don't want to give away which is fair dues but how does all that sponsorship and all that come about um it's just research bro it's research it's research literally you got to be smart about the way you're going through this you got to link you got to link up you know you got to link um uh, what's the word? Um, you just got to uh, link up different ideas and different, um, uh, what's the word, uh, comparisons. So, you know, you got to look at wrestling. you got to look at what works well with wrestling. Um, um, for instance, you know, I've got 
my partnership and deal with with Dazzy for Max, um, you know, Max Wrestling Magazine, and that works for us. That works for both of us because I can use the magazine as an incentive to get it to get interviews. Yeah. Right, and he can use, um, and he gets the interviews, and that's their spread. That's their spread. They have every every issue. They have an interview with a major wrestler or someone to do with wrestling, and that's a big incentive for both of us. So it works like that for us. That's yeah. how that works. See, that's the thing, though, guys. As well, we talk. He talks about working with the person and working with that as well. At the end of the day, I mean, I don't do this as well. I mean, I don't do this for anything other than fun and making money and hopefully, you know, doing what they're trying to do, that Sunday Circle they're trying to do as well. But at the end of the day, we're one big happy family. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, we're all big wrestling fans. We're all one big happy family. We want the best. And like I said, it's not, it's not about competition. It's not oh, about no. comp- oh. It's not about competition at all. We're not looking to, to take the other one out and do that. No. We benefit... We work together, and at the end of the day, we benefit, we work together, and as long as our podcast, our respective podcast, like Man and Kiddies, for example, come out better for it, then that's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. We worked to make sure our podcast, our podcasts get this, you know, that push and that notoriety that it so richly deserves. Uh, what is the future for Mr. Kenny Killer as uh. a podcast host? Um, boy, I don't know, just to keep doing what I'm doing, really. Um, I, I've always said to myself, I feel like I get better the older I get. That's just how I feel. My my, my, my knowledge base, um, especially, I feel like it's getting, you know, better. And my confidence and everything, man. Like, um, the stuff that I do now, I could I could never do, uh, you know, um, uh, some years ago. I was never, you know, I was, oh, I've always been a confident guy. But, you know, um, I had, you know, I had a lot of nerves in terms of, like, reading stuff out to people and being in a public, you know what I mean, in a public thing. But now, I'm just like, the older I get, the more I'm just like, you know what, Psh, it's all good. Yeah. So, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm good at that. So if I could take, you know, if I could do, um, I mean, I'm doing a podcast at the moment. I, f- I feel like if I wanted to, I could take it to, to a radio. If I wanted to, I could take it to radio. Um, but I want to keep it as it is. Um, and at the moment, um, obviously, I've got a small family. So um, it's just all about my family, man. So like, that's, that's what I care about the most is my family, making sure my kids can eat, you know, and my missus is happy and just, you know, I'm a family man, you know. So um, it's just all about my kids. So I work hard. Um, I'm, a bi- I'm a business developer by day. And, um, you know, as, as a lot of people don't know that, but yeah, I'm a business developer by day. And, um, but the rest of the time, I'm a hardcore wrestling fan. I'm a seg head, to, you know, for life. And, um, it's all about the Sunday segue. The future is Sunday segue. Yeah. Jump, uh, jump on the ride. And yeah, if you jump don't. On- if Jump on the ride, guys. Jump and it on. If you don't, if you don't, well, you've got to choke on them slap nuts, man. Yeah, as Jeff Jarrett once said. Mm-hmm. And if we had our, and if we had our way, guys, would hit with a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> you know this. Right, that's about it for this. Then we're going to wrap it up there. Like I say, it's a short one because we are busy people. So, Kenny, thank you so much, brother. Hopefully, we can get you on. Like I say, be on standby as well. I've got a big show coming up, one year anniversary. We want to get you on. We want to get you a part of it. As well, we want to get you and hopefully Shogs back on. Get well soon, right hand man, hashtag tech guy, as well. And with that being said, where can we find the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast? Okay, you can find the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast on Twitter at Sunday Segway, Segway is spelled S E G U E, our website, sundaysegway.weebly.com. Um, make sure, please. All segheads, everyone out there, please like our Facebook page. Get it out there because right about now I'm trying to build that up, try to make it more current. Um, just, yeah, try to make it more current, try to make it more modern, just everything, funny, everything. So just make sure you like our page, follow our page, look at all the um, the things that we post, comment on them, whatever. Do whatever, but just make sure you like our page. You can find us on Podomatic, um, Stitcher Radio, Mixcloud. Or actually, maybe not that much Mixcloud anymore, but you could definitely find us on our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're just updating it with all the rest of the episodes and the Retro Round Table. Check out the Retro Round Table. If you're an old school guy, 20 plus years in the, in the game, loving the old school, Make sure you check out the Retro Round Table. We're at episode um, eight at the moment, I believe. Um, next episode will be Survivor Series 1992. Check that out in April, coming to you. Um, and yeah, every Sunday you can check us out. Every single Sunday we're here um, by hook or by crook. So yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I just want to say a big, massive, well done. Tony Walker, Wrestling Matters podcast, 50 episodes. Uh, remember it at the beginning. Now it's here. You're still here. Keep yeah. doing the damn thing. And if people don't like that, you can choke on that slap nuts. Woo! And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, my name is the H, the E to the A to the D. And like it's always been said, you can choke on that slap nuts because wrestling matters, wrestling fans. We are out. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That was the interview, the 30-minute interview. Hope you've enjoyed it. And hope you've enjoyed the 30th episode, the 50th episode of the Wrestling Matters podcast. Okay, that little special thing. History's been made on the Wrestling Matters podcast, ladies and gentlemen. For the first time, I got an interview with the one and only Mr. Kitty Killer. Thank you, sir. Congratulations on 100 episodes as well. Thank you for the promo message you sent as well, the little message you sent. Thanking me and congratulating me on 50th episode. Now we've got all the big stuff out the way. And make sure you check out Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast as well. Each and every Sunday. iTunes, Podomatic, and all that good stuff. Even YouTube as well. And if you haven't, if you don't know Sunday Segway, then sorry, but you're an idiot. It is the hardest podcast around. And I'm very, 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 very proud to be associated with that. And very proud to be a Sedgehead as well. And like I say, Kenny, when the conversations we had, you're not going to get any chew out of me, brother. Okay? I'm here to help you. I'm here to bail you out. Anytime you want me to help bail you out on something like I did this past Sunday, make sure you check that episode out. You know, let me know and I'll jump on board all day. But with that being said, guys, that is the end of the 50th episode of the Wrestling Matters podcast. But before I go, I have a few thank yous. I feel the need to deliver some thank yous. Because many of you people are probably thinking, Oh, I do this all myself. True, I do. You know, I do do this all myself. You know, I do the creating and editing and producing. But this whole thing started with me last year going on Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. And I developed an idea, something that I already, I already had this kind of idea for a podcast with CVFM with uh, Idris Rashid and Idris thank you so much for allowing me an opportunity to go on your radio uh, station uh, I wanted to do something like this for the for that as well who knows I might still be able to do it in the future I don't know depends what the future holds for that but I did a six minute and I still do it to this very day a six minute podcast for CVFM radio again make sure you check that out each and every Tuesday make sure you check CVFM out as well CFM 104 104 is it 104.5 FM somewhere around about that CVFM.org.uk for the website as well you'll be able to get everything on there make sure you check them out and Idris thank you so much for the opportunity because you're just as part as this as Segway and everybody else as well you're just a part of this as well because you set the barrier for me as far as part podcasts go you set the barrier you set the tone and i just took it on from there and this whole wrestling matters podcast thing was kind of the idea that i wanted to do for your network address but it, you know with the set with you know, the six minute it was like back to the drawing board but february 2014 i made my debut on sunday segway wrestling podcast and you know this shit took off from there basically the idea i wanted to do my own stuff i wanted to do my own podcast i mean you've You've heard it yourself. We all do that. You've heard it yourself. You heard it from Kenny as well. We're all wrestling fans at the end of the day. We're looking to have fun. We're looking to make a little bit of money as well, just to make it all sweet and satisfying. But at the end of the day, the money is the bonus for me. I want to make. I do this. Do I want to make money? Hell yeah, I do. But at the end of the day, I do this for the fun of it because I'm a wrestling fan. And like if I was said, everybody's got an opinion about be about wrestling, no matter where it is. Especially WWE, but after all, after I appeared on the uh, February 2014 uh, episode, one of the episodes in that month of uh, Sunday Segway, like I said, the shit just took off from there. And two months later, April 7th, 2014, the Wrestling Matters podcast was born. That's right, the whole thing was born. It's and it's been a hell of a ride, man. It's been a hell of a ride from the first 50 episodes that I've had. Thank you to everybody who's appeared on the show, who've, who've took the time to come on. Mike Rodriguez, uh, Vicky Earls, a few other people as well. Um, Mike Rodriguez, Vicky Earls, you know, Roxy, Queen of Heels. Got nothing but love for that girl. Tim Vicious. Darren Dyer, get you guys on in the future as well. Get, again, in the future as well. I had, a, I had a good conversation with Tim, especially you as well, Darren as well. I mean, I, lo I love it. I've loved every minute of it. 50th episode. 
Shout out to Colleen Masters and Jezebeth. Jezebeth, you were an absolute blast to interview. You were so sweet and so down to earth. It was an absolute pleasure. And Colleen was just Colleen, basically. She was relaxed, chilled, you know, and very cool very cool rather to interview and you know like i say it's just been a complete blast guys and big big thank you goes out to sunday Seg- segway for paving the road shugs kenny nothing but love for you guys man sunday segway is where it's at make sure you check them out it's been an absolute blast guys 50 episodes and like a great wrestler once said i've only just begun I am not done by a long shot. Future episodes coming up. I've got Celtic Commodity coming on. Vicky Earls and his new and their new right hand man, Chris Dutton, will be coming on very soon as well. I hope I pronounced that right. If I didn't, I apologize. So guys, get ready. You're coming on very soon. I'm gonna get you on. And we're already in talks with Vicky as well to get that to get to make that shit happen. Uh, Nadia, I've still got a spot for you. I still want to do that interview with you. It's just getting it, you know, getting the right, you know, spot and everything like that, and getting the right time to do it. Because, like I say, I'm a busy man, and I'm sure you're busy too. Uh, big thank you to Jezebel. Shout out to anyone who wants to come on. Any wrestler out there who's listening to this, get the word out there. I want you guys on. You know, I'm. I can only do what I can for this podcast, man. And there's a female out there that wants to come on and be and be part of this wrestling matters podcast who, who, who's good at co-hosts come on down i got a good idea from someone on facebook named david anderson f- who you know maybe i can bring a female on here and we could, and we could spice this baby up a little bit and uh, have a female's perspective of of the part of her way of wrestling as well i know there's other females out there as well but someone who could be my co-host and like with sunday segway as well with shugs and and kenny you know you know take that to that level as well which is should be good just a great it's been an absolute blast like i say great fun to do and uh like i say i'm far far from done facebook.com forward slash wm podcast at wm podcast on twitter ajw wrestling matters on youtube okay youtube.com forward slash ajw wrestling matters and just be on the lookout guys because there's going to be a lot more if you think the first 50 shows were good <laughs> ho 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 you ain't seen nothing yet and whether you like it or not sooner or later guys i'm gonna make this show and i'll be damned if i don't the best in the world you know why because the because the wrestling matters podcast will be just two three. until next time peace out